our ways of treating pain and mental health have largely failed. Drugs don't work for the vast majority of people. We haven't been able, in spite of billions and billions of dollars, we haven't solved it for most people. And in fact, it's getting worse. So we study how the brain creates mental models, belief structures that then guide how we experience the world, and in particular, how we experience pain. Our society has developed this model where, so if you have knee pain, there's something broken in your, in your knee, something wrong with your knee. If you have neck pain, something's wrong with your neck. And when it comes to the body, the, the pain we feel and other symptoms we feel are not simply reflections of input from the body. They are constructions that are based on our concepts, that are based on what our brain believes we ought to be feeling. I can give you a, a placebo treatment, a sham treatment, and that treatment has nothing in it. It's, there's no pharmacological ingredients, there's no physical ingredients, but in some cases, it can be a powerful cue that you're being helped. It can lead you to expect pain relief, to believe that you're experiencing pain relief. Is that just fool, you fooling yourself? Or is there something deeper happening at a neurobiological level? And what we found over the years, that is if you take a placebo drug, a fake drug, that can cause opioid release in your brain. That's the brain's natural painkillers. It can cause the way your brain responds to pain and encodes pain to be altered. So we see reduced responses in pain-related brain areas. Yeah, one, one of the main tools we use is the magnetic resonance imaging scanner, MRI scanner. What that lets us do is take pictures of people's brain as they're thinking, feeling, experiencing pain, experiencing emotions, uh, and we get about 300,000 measures every half a second. And then we can apply computational techniques to the brain dynamics. So what is it about these, the brain dynamics, about the, the fluctuations and activity up and down that creates the experience of pain? and what happens when we deliver an intervention. So what we're trying to do is understand what is the neural code underlying a symptom like pain? How do they become feedback loops that we can't break out of? That's something that we can't address using the standard medical model. And frankly, it's something that we have to understand the mechanisms of through basic scientific research on how the neural code works and what's going on. And that's gonna give us a next generation of uh, ideas about how to treat it. You know, how do we make psychological treatments more effective? How do we make behavioral treatments more effective and can really create a lasting improvement? What the heck is that? I'm Tor Wager. I'm the Dana L. Taylor Distinguished Professor in Psychology and Neuroscience. And I am the first hire in the cluster on understanding the neural code.